Hi everyone, today I'll show you how to move an object along the predefined spline path in Sequencer using Unreal Engine. This video is intended for those who create cinematics or videos in Unreal Engine and not for those who make games. You are unlikely to find a tutorial for this method elsewhere because we'll be using some undocumented features of Unreal Engine. I can click anywhere on the timeline and the object moves to the correct position on the spline. This method gives you great control over the path and how objects move within the frame. I recently finished working on my own film in Unreal Engine and moving objects along the spline was really useful to me. This method works in any version of Unreal Engine 5 and maybe even earlier versions, though I haven't tested that. So let's get started. Let's say you have an object, a static mesh that you want to move. My robot consists of many parts. I create a blueprint of the actor type, give it a name, click edit and move my static mesh into it. I select all the parts and make them hierarchical children of the body part. The robot has two wheels that should rotate while moving. I'll control their rotation using a helper object, which I'm going to create now, an arrow component. I search for arrow, find arrow, reduce its size, switch to side view and move the start of the arrow to the axis of the wheel. Now I find my wheels, the left wheel and the right wheel and make them children of this arrow. Now when I rotate the arrow with the wheels rotate as well. Let's switch back to the default view. I rotate the arrow and the wheels rotate. I also added another arrow component to my robot to control these arms. You will have your own object so you may not need this, but the arrow for controlling the wheels might be useful if you are making something like a car, a bicycle, anything with rotating wheels. Compile, save. Close this blueprint. Now we create a new blueprint that will contain a spline. Create a new blueprint class of the actor type and name it BP Spline. Double click to open it. At the top there are tabs Event Graph, Construction Script. We are switching to the Viewport tab. Add a new spline component. Leave its name as Spline. Compile, save and close it. Drag the blueprint we created for the spline into this scene. This will be the starting point of the movement trajectory. I select the second point. Holding down the ALT key, I drag the point to the right and the new point is created. I continue dragging while holding ALT key to create as many points as I need. For example, I want the robot to follow this trajectory. I can control these points, I can move them by simply dragging. It's important to make sure we're in global coordinates. So we don't move along the vertical axis, but only along the horizontal one. So the robot stays on the floor and doesn't sink or float above the surface. Therefore, it's crucial that it moves only along this axis and never vertically. We can also rotate the points and adjust the curvature if needed. Once our spline is ready, we open the robot's blueprint, the viewport, the construction script, event graph, here we have all the events we want to handle. The pre-existing events won't be needed. So we delete them by pressing the delete key. Then we create a new custom event. We name it move robot. And we'll need two variables. We add a spline path variable of the type that we just created, BP spline. And the second variable, here is where the clever trick I mentioned begins which involves undocumented features of Unreal Engine. We add a variable with any name. I name it position state of the floor type. Both of these variables should be visible, editable and exposed to cinematics. And here is the trick. We create a function called set followed by the exact same name as the variable position state. So you could name this variable whatever you want, but the function name should be set followed by the name of the variable. This function takes an input of the same type we created, which is float. The name here isn't important, it could be a set post state. Then we trigger the event we created, event move robot. For this event, we add an input of the float type, the same as the variable. I would like to emphasize again that the name of the variable and function must match, but for the input and output values, the names don't need to match. The position state variable is a float number between 0 and 1. If it's 0, the object at the very start of the spline. If it's 1, 
the object has moved to the very end of the spline. All intermediate values between 0 and 1 represent positions along the spline. If it's 0 0.5, the object is in the middle of the spline. How to initiate the set post state function will be covered a bit later when we move to the sequencer. For now, let's fill in the function event move robot, which will place our object at the correct point on the spline based on the value of the position state variable. We take the spline and use the get spline length function. If we don't see this function, we need to disable the checkbox and then we'll see all the other functions. Here is get spline length, drag it here and an additional node appears. The purpose of this node is that the spline path is our blueprint and we extract the specific spline that has lengths from it. That's why this intermediate node automatically appears. Now if we multiply the value of the position state passed here by the total length of the spline, we'll get the distance that robot should have traveled along the spline, how far it currently is from the start. If position state is zero, that means it hasn't moved, it's at the very start of the spline. If position state equals one, then we we'll multiply the length of the spline by one and it means the robot has traveled the entire length of the spline. Now we just need to place our object at the correct point on the spline, and for that there is a very useful function called getLocationAtDistanceAlongSpline. It gives the coordinates of the point based on the distance traveled along the spline. Here we have the spline, we have the traveled distance, and we'll get the required coordinates of the point. Then we pass these coordinates to our object using set actor location and rotation. The object we are moving, to which we assign location and rotation, is self, meaning it's the blueprint robot that contains the robot itself. That's why it's self. And here we have new location, which is the position the robot should move to. And it's super important to get these coordinates in world space, not in local space, because here we are also setting the coordinates in the world space. We connect these nodes like this, but while the object moves along the spline, it also rotates. Therefore, we also need to get not just the coordinates, but the rotation of the object as well. Get rotation at distance along spline is a similar function that will give us the rotation of the object. This is the distance, this is the spline, and this is the rotation. Now our movement function is ready. It's really simple. The function starts, we get the given spline, find its length, calculate the distance the robot should have moved by this point, get the coordinates of this point, its rotation, and pass them to the robot. Compile, save. So our main robot movement function along the spline is ready. A very important point is that the set position state function must have the call editor checkbox enabled. This means that the function will work in editor mode as well, not just when rendering or running the game. This is necessary so that when working in the sequencer, we can see the object's movement in real time. Compile, save, close, and drag the BP robot into the scene. It now appears in the outliner, and here it has two parameters. The first is the spline path, where we choose the spline we need. The second is position state, which we won't touch for now, but we'll adjust in the sequencer. Now create a new sequence, cinematics level sequence, give it a name and open it. Then drag our robot into the sequencer, click the plus button, and we can see that we can edit the position state parameter. The robot automatically jumps to the start of the spline. We create a keyframe. At this frame, the robot is at the start of the spline. Now go to the desired time point, create a new keyframe. Set the value to 1, meaning the robot has moved to the end of the spline. Now we see that until the first keyframe, the robot stays in place, and after that it starts moving along the spline. If we move the second keyframe to the left, the robot will move faster. If we move it to the right, the robot will move slower. So we have control over its movement, and we can see all this in real time in editor mode, which is very convenient. Now let's take a closer look at its movement. When it moves, its wheels don't rotate. These brushes shouldn't rotate, but the wheels should rotate when the robot moves. Let's make it so that the wheels rotate. This might also come in handy if, for example, you are moving something along the spine, like a bicycle, car, or anything with wheels. Press save, go back to the blueprint and go to our movement function for the robot. This is where we'll also make the wheels rotate. A little math here. How do we figure out how many degrees the wheel will rotate after traveling a certain distance? If we depict the wheel in profile, it looks like a circle. Let's take the circumference of the wheel and call it A. So if the wheel travels a distance equal to A, it will make one full rotation. 
If you have an engineering mindset, you can imagine it and understand why this is the case. If not, just trust me that it works this way. We have the distance the robot has traveled by this point. This is the output of this node. So if we take the distance traveled and divide it by A, we'll get the number of rotations the wheel has made. If we multiply it by 360, we'll get the number of degrees the wheel has rotated. So we take the travel distance divided by the wheel circumference, which is 2 by P by radius. We need multiply by P function. And if you can see this function, disable this checkbox so you can see it. Multiply by P. Now you need to know or measure the radius of your wheel, multiply it by 2 and then enter that value here. You'll get 2 by P by radius as a circumference of the wheel. In my case, that's 19.54. Connect it to this node. So we divide the travel distance by the wheel circumference. Now we multiply the result by 360, use multiply, enter the constant value 360 and now we have the number of degrees the wheel has rotated by this moment in time. As you might remember, I have an auxiliary component called arrow wheels, which is responsible for rotating the wheels. If I had only one wheel, I could rotate it directly, but I'm using this helper component to rotate all the wheels at once. I drag it into the graph and call the function set relative rotation on it. This means we are applying a relative rotation. It has some initial rotation. After traveling a certain distance, we are adding to that initial value to get the desired rotation. Right now the function prompts us to specify a rotation for all three axes. I right click and choose split struct pin, which allows us to control each rotation axis separately. We are going to rotate around the second axis. We apply the calculated number of degrees to that axis only. For the other two axes we don't change anything, the component remains in its original rotation for those. Let's now take a look at how it works. We compile, save and switch back to the editor. Well, we see that rotation doesn't happen. What's wrong? I forgot to connect the execution pins. This is the flow, the sequence in which the nodes are executed in the graph. The event was triggered, the robot was moved to the correct position, but the wheels were not rotated because the script didn't continue to the next node. If we don't make that connection, the execution won't reach the wheel rotation node. Compile, save, close and test again. The wheel is rotating, but it's spinning in the wrong direction. That's easy to fix. We'll just reverse the rotation direction. To do this, we simply add a minus sign here. So instead of 1954, we write minus 1954. We compile, save, close and test. And now the wheels rotate correctly, along with the helping arrow. It's worth noting that there are some nuances here. For example, when the robot is making a turn like this, both wheels rotate at the same speed. But in reality, the wheel on the inside of the curve should rotate slower than the wheel on the outside. That's because the outer wheel covers a longer path than the inner one. However, the difference is not really noticeable, so I decided to leave it as it is. Now let's go over a couple more useful tips on how to control the movement. Let's say you want your robot to drive to a certain point, like right here, then pause and only continue moving afterward. Here's what you do. At that point we are going to add a keyframe. Right now the value is 0.38. When we add a keyframe, it's snapping back to 0. So we just type in 0.38 again. Then we move a few frames forward and again enter 0.38. Now between these two keyframes there will be no movement. The robot will pause at position 0.38 and then continue moving after. As I mentioned before, you can speed up the motion by moving keyframes closer together or slow it down by spreading them out. In general, you control the movement speed by adjusting the position state value and how quickly it changes between keyframes. For final control, you can switch to curve mode and change the animation graph of the movement. For example, even though two keyframes have the same value, there might be movement between them if the curve is shaped that way. You might see the robot briefly move backward and then forward again. That's due to the shape of the animation curve. This falls more into the realm of animation and I hope you're already familiar with that or will learn more about it in some other videos. And the main goal of this tutorial has been achieved. Now you know how to move an object along the spline, you know how to control that movement, you know how to rotate wheels correctly. I hope this video was useful to you. If so, please give it a like, leave a comment, it really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos. This was Ilya Cinema. Bye.